I'm Chanel Greco from Sapiris, and in this video, I'll show you how you can use Google Apps Script to automatically archive Gmail messages. Let me walk you through what our script will be doing. It will access Gmail and search for all of the messages or the threads that have the label of inbox. If you're wondering why I said have the label inbox and did not say are in your inbox, then have a look at the explanation video that I've created where I analyze or where I discuss what Gmail, how it works and what labels are and why these are in folders and while why there isn't an inbox folder. So back to our script, it will have a look at all of the messages, AKA threads that have the inbox label. Now a thread or a conversation can have multiple messages, just like the one we're seeing here. What will happen is that we will analyze in the next step, the last message, what for a date does that have? And if that date is more than 30 days before today's current date, in that case, go ahead and archive that message. How do we archive messages in Gmail? We simply take away the inbox thread or the inbox label that is, but there's a method that does that for us that we will be getting to know. So that's essentially what our automation script will be doing. And we will run it on a, how should I say, on a per on request basis. So we will be executing it one by one, but we might even want to automate that. So I'm thinking of, you know, maybe using a trigger, like um, a weekly trigger or something. So we can have a look at that, how we would do that as well. So that's what the script's going to be doing. Now let's actually create that script. Head over to the app script dashboard or home screen. You can find that under script dot google dot com slash home and let's create a new project you can give it whatever name makes sense for you i'm just going to call this gmail archiver demo there you go okay and we're going to start out by renaming this first function like so archive threads it's what is what i'm calling this and we're going to start out by accessing the Gmail app and getting all of the threads that have the inbox label. So I'm creating a variable to store that in there. Gmail app, let's use the autocomplete, get inbox. There you go, get inbox threads and then make sure to use correct syntax to close that out. Okay, so that's gonna give me a list of all of those threads that have the inbox label. Once I have that, I want to loop over them. So I'm saying threads dot for each, and now I have to create a callback function, and I will be saying on every time I loop, so on every thread, do the following like so and closes out and from time to time go ahead and click the save project button by the way if you're wondering hmm for each i also have a, a dedicated video tutorial about loops i'll be linking to that as well because there's different loops that one can use um, i like to use for each i think it's very easy to use but if you feel more comfortable with you the, using um a conventional for loop with you know a counter that you set up then that's perfectly fine too it will work um, just as well it's just that i personally like the for each loop okay so in that loop so on every iteration on every thread that we take and kind of like analyze we want to do the following we're passing a condition or we're checking for if and now we're going to say calculate difference. Now that's a method we're calling here, but it doesn't exist yet. So we have to create it afterwards. Then thread dot get last message date. There you go. And if it is greater than 30, then we want to act upon it. 
there you go. So I already know, okay, so I'm searching for if calculate difference, we're gonna calculate some difference. This is um, a, a function that I have to create. This is not an existing method on Google Apps Script or on the Gmail app, so I will have to be providing that. And then I'm saying thread, get last message date. So get the date of the last message in that thread. And if it's greater than 30, then do the following. And what is the following? It's going to be thread, not threads, but thread.move to archive. There you go. So we have that in place of that we're getting all our threads that have the label inbox or in all mail, and we will be analyzing them and looking for if the last message of that thread is the date is older than 30 or yeah, the there you go, is older than 30, then go ahead and archive it. So I said we need to calculate the difference. Now, this can be a little bit tricky when you're dealing with dates in JavaScript. Um, I have the following that I will be using, function, and what for a function? Well, this one here, we need to create this function, the one that we're using. And we will be passing in what, this is what we're passing in. And what is that? Well, that's essentially a date of what? Of the last message of our thread. So we know that's gonna be a date and that's why I'm gonna call it the message date, like so. And now on to what the function will be doing. We're gonna create a constant of one day. And there you go, times 60 times 60 times thousand like so the constant of today equals and then we're instantiating or we're creating a new date today and then we will be calculating the different the difference of the days and that will be the following math round now these are default JavaScript methods I'm using here, the math object and the round method on it. Math apps, there you go. And then message date, which is gonna be the actual date of the message, minus today, there you go, one day. Like so, well, let's write it like so. Now, this is awesome because it really calculates the day. So it subtracts today and it, or it's what I use to compare if a message date is older than 30 days compared to today, not to who knows when. When we automate things, it's very common that we write a lot of code ourselves, but certain snippets we might you know, search for online and reuse them because others might have solved problems and there's no need for us to go, you know, creating crazy scripts when all we have to do is copy paste. So I want to guide you a little bit through this. First of all, I'm going to show you how I found this snippet here. So this dealing with the date and also calculating the difference between today and the date of the message. I want to show you also exactly what it does. Um, because it is a little bit abstract if you've never seen it. And also, you know, you have to be aware of that you might have to, um, how should I say, you might have to adapt the script. So I wasn't able to use it just exactly the way it is. So I want to guide you a bit on, you know, how did I proceed in this situation when I was creating this script so that you know a little bit better how you have to do so in your situations. So the first thing I did was I, head, I headed over to Google obvious place to start out whenever you're automating something. And I wrote calculate days between two dates JavaScript because I wanna be very specific on that language. And I've, as I've already exp um, explained in previous such videos, Google Apps Script is essentially JavaScript enriched with a lot of Gmail app objects and methods which JavaScript doesn't know of that are exclusive to Google Apps Script, but most of the language is essentially JavaScript. So that's why when you're searching for something, for a solution to a problem, you can very easily swap Google Apps Script for JavaScript and you'll find more solutions to problems. So I found something here that looks interesting. 
how to calculate the number of days between two dates. I had a look at the code here, and you might notice it looks very similar to what I've done myself or what I've used in my script, and I found that this does the trick. Now, there are certain warnings, like, hey, you know, not all door, uh, days are exactly 24 hours long and so on and so forth. But I read a bit through the warnings and must say, you know, I might be a day off or so, but that's okay for what I'm doing. That's what I explained before. I always have to think, what am I creating the script for? So I had a look at the script and I thought, hmm, that could work. Now, maybe what is this script doing? I tried to demonstrate this over here simply in my terminal. So I've added all of this information. So we start out with calculating um, the day in milliseconds. Then we have our constant today. We're using the new date constructor to create a new timestamp and the message date and here I created a new date just with a random date I've passed in. That is simulating the message date we received. So the last message, the date, that is what we will be saving under message date. And then I've, I've also displayed what they contain. So this is a day, 24 hours and milliseconds. Today contains this here and message date contains this here. Now you might be wondering, wait a second, didn't you create the 10th of June, 2021? Why do I see July? Hmm, interesting question. Well, the reason is that like in a lot of things in programming and in this specific case date, the months start at zero. You know this concept maybe from arrays. In arrays, the first position is not position one, it's position zero. And the same is true for the months. So whenever you create a new date in JavaScript and you want to create, let's say, the month of July, you have to use six, zero, six, or six, because that is the sixth position, so to say, in the year, and it symbolizes July. And then what we're doing in the const different, we're using the round method. And here to show you this, I have the math object. So this is a, a, a standard object that is available in JavaScript. Where you go here, we have the round method, meaning it returns the nearest integer. So if it were 4.9, we would get back five. Okay, rounding makes sense because we tend to speak about full days, so one day or 30 days difference or whatever. And then the second method I'm using is the dot apps. What does that do? Let's go down here, blah, blah, there's an app somewhere. There you go, apps. Returns the absolute positive value of X. And here is also um, a demo. So here we see minus 4.7, if you use the apps method on it, will return just simply 4.7. So that means no matter um, in which order we're subtracting to find out what the date is, if it's minus four or four, it's just going to give us back four, which is perfect. So we don't have to make sure to like have today first and then subtract the past date doesn't make a difference. I'm just looking for a difference of 30 days in between those two days and then divide it by the milliseconds. And that will give us back in this case, a difference of four days. And here you see uh, four days. Well, you see with the time zones or the time stamps, they also play a role. So that's why it could be that's a day off. But as I said, for this script, I'm perfectly fine with that. I do not mind. If you need to really take into account the timestamp, well then probably, or no, then definitely, we would need to find another solution to deal with that, that we would be one day off. Now we have another look at calculate difference here in our script. What we're seeing is that the message date that I'm passing in. So if compared to the original version, we're creating the second date within that or before or in the snippet here, it's not even a function on its own, but we do not have to create that second date. Why not? Why not? Because we're using the last message date. So that's why we're passing it in and we're simply using it here. And the return diff days, that is also something that we do not see in the snippet here. Here it's not necessary. Why is it necessary here? Well, because we're calculating or we're doing something in a function and we don't want to keep it in that function. Instead, we need to give it out of that function, so to speak, because we need to use uh, this here and this const 
context. And that's why we return the diff day so that we actually have that number four or whatever available so that we can compare it with 30. It's the moment of truth. Let's run the script and see if it works. Simply click on run. It starts executing. No idea if it's going to work. It should. I hope it does. Let me know if it works for you in the script below. Authorization required? Yeah, definitely go ahead. We have to grant access to our Gmail app. So we're or giving the script the access to our Gmail app. Execution started. So this is already a good sign because that means that there's no syntax errors that all of our script of our code is, is written correctly. The question is, will it do what we expect it to do? So this might take a couple of seconds, maybe even a couple of minutes, depending how many messages you have in your inbox. We currently have 123 in the inbox here. Um, if you have a thousand, it probably will fail because it just needs too much time to access all of those threads and check the last messages. But uh, my experience is with 123, it works out well. And as a matter of fact, did you see it? 53 in the inbox. So before it was 123, now 53, that means something has happened. Let's have a look at our messages here. So something is definitely ongoing. Let's have a look. Execution completed. Okay, so it ran through and it still wasn't finished as a matter of fact, because we're now down to 38 messages from the previously 123. Let's just quickly scroll down. 14th of June are now the oldest messages here in our uh, all mail with the inbox label. So I would say not too bad, actually. It worked as intended. So that would be how you can create the script. Now, how could we automate the script? Um, maybe you would want to have this run every week, uh, which also makes the running duration shorter, obviously. If you have, let's say, like 123 messages in your inbox like I do, which you, know, you might accumulate after a week, we see it works out fine. So that's a message load that it can deal with. So let me head over here to our script and then to our triggers. And then let's go ahead and add a trigger the function we want to write is archive threads. So that's perfectly fine. That's also fine. Uh, select event source time driven. Yep, that's good. Select type of time based trigger. Maybe not hour timer, but day timer. And select time of day. I don't know. Let's have this run from 10 p.m. to 11 p.m. Uh, I'm usually not using or uh, online that late. So select type of ticker based. Um, uh, do we want a day timer? No, let's make a week timer. And let's say maybe even every Sunday. There you go. So now we have a trigger that will run every Sunday from 10 p.m. until 11 p.m. And what will run? This archive threads will run. So let's save that. And now this is set up and it will automatically archive any messages or any threads that contain messages where the last message is older than 30 days. And like that, you will never have any old messages here visible in inbox or with the inbox label, that is to say. Um, yeah, so that's how you could create an auto archiver and you want to maybe run it on a per execution basis, then fine. Then you just access your script here in the editor and hit the run button. If you want to have a trigger that is time based, then you can do so simply by adding it right here. How about you give our other Google Apps script video tutorials a look as well? You can learn how, for instance, you can create Google Calendar events automatically based on Google Sheets data. And please go ahead and subscribe to this YouTube channel so that you don't miss out on any of the future video tutorials we will be providing you.